Hi guys, I really appreciate really appreciate uh, you being with me today. Let us pray. Father, we first and foremost today bless you for this day. We bless you for our time together, Lord God. And I pray that you will speak today in such a powerful way that people will be healed, set free, delivered, oh God, because we know, dear Father, it's all about you. Stretch forth your hand to every heart, every soul, every spirit, and do what you need to do. Take out any dross in our lives. Take out any bad thing that would distract us from your word today. In the name of Jesus, amen. Speak to me, speak to me in, in your precious name. Okay, guys, welcome today. I'm honored to be with you. Um, my, my title today is The Story of Snakes. It's a really weird title, I know. Um, but I am going somewhere with it. Uh, last summer, I was watching um, the the Elevation Youth um, online conference called Youth X. I I think it's short for Youth Expo. It's where they have all kinds of different things. It was like. 100 and something hours, like it was a week youth conference and they had different segments every day. Um, and then in the evening, they would have a segment called, um, called Mic Check. And within Mic Check, there would be different segments. Mic Check would be before the uh, sir, before the evening sermon. Uh, so they had my check every day, both in the afternoon and the evening. And then within my check, uh, they had different segments. And they had a segment called Youth Nature, and where they would bring animals. I remember one time they brought a llama, one time they brought something else. But, you know, it was just so funny. And one time, I remember, the segment was hosted by three people. Uh, there was John, there was Carlos, and then there was Elijah. Um, uh, Pastor Stephen and Holly's son, Elijah, Th Elijah Furtick. And I remember, I remember one day, <laughs> um, for Youth Nature, uh, they, they brought a bunch of snakes to the studio. No, uh, he brought, the person brought a snake. Um, to the studio, and I remember uh, the person saying this was a, a non uh, venomous snake, and the person put it on Elijah's neck. I was like, Oh, God, gross! It was so funny. So, for some strange reason, I was thinking about that last Sunday, and then I, I think, and the per, I remember the person saying that snakes of that type are non-venomous, which means they don't have venom, venom to kill you, um, or to harm you in a real serious way. And he said, some snake, snakes are actually friendly creatures, and they don't harm anyone. Like he said, 
needed several snakes depending on the variety because apparently there are different varieties of snakes snakes um he said some varieties of snakes don't harm you they just they just look harmful but they don't they're not harmful at all they just look scary and i was like Okay, and then I began to think of uh, uh, the the Bible in how um, I began to think of three stories in the Bible. Uh, the first was when a serpent appeared to Eve and caused her caused her to question what God said and sometimes that's what the devil does and that's what we do we we know what God said but we still question it did God say did God really say and those questions, although questioning is really good, um, those questions can some sometimes be used by the devil to detract us. Um, when God tells you something and he is sure about it and he says do it, um, Although it's totally fine to question God as to why, but when he says something and he says, do this, um, and you constantly question why, it's okay to question sometimes. Questioning is human. Wanting answers is human. But some questions become dangerous when they become a blockade, uh, when you're constantly questioning uh, why this and why that, or did God really say, it's all right to question and want answers, but at the same time, uh, question it, but do it anyway. Question it while you're, while you're doing it anyway. Because with Eve, the God gave her a specific set of instructions. Uh, he said you can eat of anything, but you can't eat the fruit from that tree. And then, and then when the serpent came, he said, "Did God really say that?" And Eve knew that he did. Eve knew that he really did. But that question caused her to doubt God. And although questions are really healthy, they're really, um, can be really, um, great for you to question. Um, Sometimes it gets dangerous when when questions become an inhibitor. Like you're you you question and you're waiting for an answer and you're waiting and waiting and waiting and you're just and you just don't move at all. I really think God is calling you to God is calling people to question but move with your question like you can question all you want but but when you're sure when you're sure when you're thinking maybe god didn't say maybe god did say move anyway move in the doubt move in the fear just move anyway and when he may be uh and sometimes God wouldn't say it, but sometimes 
in your own body, you would you would feel it like sometimes uh, for you workaholics out there, your body will start to run down and you'll start to feel sick and get more irritable and be drained. And you'll feel like, should I stop? And the resounding answer would be yes. Or should I spend more time with the kids? And the resounding answer would be yes. So sometimes God wouldn't give an impression, but the things around you are all screaming yes. So, um, so question, but move anyway. And at the end of the day, you'll, I, I seriously believe you'll end up where God wants you. Um, and he'll teach you some lessons, even if it's the wrong move, and even if it sends you on the, uh, the wrong course for a while, ultimately you'll get what he has for you, and you'll, and you'll receive what he has for you ultimately. So when I think of Eve in the garden and how the snake deceived her. It was, it was not like she was asking, uh, Lord, why did you make it like this? It's, it's not like she had doubts and she was questioning things. That's a different thing. But the devil put it in her, the serpent put it in her mind to say, did God really say? Did God really say? And instead of saying, yes, God really said, and why am I talking to you anyway? She let the devil plant these questions in her mind. God doesn't mind your questions. But what he's against is you letting the devil in the form of you in the form of your voice, uh, plant these quest plant questions in your mind. Did God really say? Did God really say? And your answer will be, yes, God really did say. And even if he didn't say, it obeying him will never steer me, steer me wrong. Even if I think he said it and he didn't and it was really me, I will ultimately end up in the place that God wants me to be. And I will pick up lessons that I need to learn on the way. So he's like, um, don't be afraid to question, but don't let those uh, questions deter you from from purpose. Um, question, but do it, do whatever while you're questioning. Do the questions while you're on the journey to purpose. Uh, ask the questions while you're on the journey to purpose. And another time when you see a that you see a serpent in the Bible is an exodus when God says to or Moses to put his rod on the ground and it turns into a serpent and uh, and it's uh, and he says stretch forth your rod on the ground and it turns into a serpent sometimes serpents are there to show us God's power. Um, serpents here, when I say serpents, I mean difficult circumstances. Circumstances that look harmful, but they're not. Because the rod, when God told Moses to stretch forth your rod, and 
laid on the ground. Um, in front of Pharaoh. Um, he didn't do that to harm Pharaoh. He did that so Fer so Pharaoh would know. I think it was Pharaoh. Um, so that Pharaoh would know that he he is God. And sometimes he sends us these serpents that look evil, but they're really kind of there to help us. And sometimes in life, he sends us problems that look very dire, circumstances that look dire, but at the end they're there to give us wisdom that we would not have had if we didn't um, if we didn't go through that. And he said, with these serpents, you have, to, you have to take the lessons. They may look evil, but they're harmless, like the serpent on Elijah's, around Elijah's neck. It looks like it, it looks nasty, but it's just lying there, and it's just, uh, um, it's lying there just, just chilling and having a good time. Um, and, and the thing with problems, the thing with what we call serpents, sometimes they are more, I'm talking about little problems, I'm not talking about uh, cancers and all that stuff. Sometimes they are more harmful when you look at them far away, but when you get up close, it's not so bad. And the Lord saying, some of you are going through problems that from far away look like, oh my gosh, this is like a big thing. But when you get up close, it's not so bad and he's saying he's saying just look at the kind of serpent it looks harmful but it's there to teach you some things and the best teacher in life is your problems I find because uh, success teaches you too but not like problems and when when the when the Moses stretched forth his hand and turned uh, his rod and it turned into a serpent, it was to show the power of God. So maybe this serpent um, is to show the power of God. Maybe unlike what I said before, this problem is as bad up close as it, it is far away. And if that's the case, maybe it is to show his power. Because um, sometimes God wants to show his power in your life, his might in your life. There are people today that God wants to give you a testimony and there is no testimony without a test. Uh, I know that's not original, but that's the best way I can explain it. Um, there is nothing like trouble. There is nothing like uh, being shown a serpent to for God to show his power and who he is in your life. And sometimes God will use a serpent or an issue to show his power, to show how strong he can be in your life. And sometimes God will use an issue to, to, um, 
to show how how powerful he's made you to deal with that serpent in your life. And sometimes serpents are there to harm you, but sometimes they're there to show his power. So that's what that story teaches me. Um, and the next, the last and final story that on music today is when Paul was bitten by a serpent after um, being shipwrecked. And that serpent was attached to his hand. I think the story is an axe. When Paul went through all this, and after being shipwrecked for days and going through all this drama, and finally get, getting, he was either getting or on his way to do ministry, he was bitten by a serpent, and that serpent stayed on his hand. And this story... Uh, teaches me about serpents. Sometimes serpents are are leeches, and they prevent you you from doing what they try to prevent you from doing what God has called you to do. They stay there. They're a constant reminder of of what of um, how the devil is on your back. And for these, um, and for these kind of serpents, you just have to not let them influence you. Even though Paul was bitten, he still got to where he needed to go. He didn't let the serpent, the serpent's bite, or the serpent on his hand, let him deter him from ministry. He still went, and I'm gonna say to you, even though the serpent bites you, still keep going on, even though the problem hurts you and bites you and it stings and it hurts and it is just full of pain. Keep going on through it and I know it's hard. I know it's hard to press through when you have a big serpent on your hand and you've just gone through so much and then you have this serpent on your hand. But God is saying, he knows it hurts, but keep moving. He knows it hurts, but keep moving. And don't let the serpent stop you. That, that snake was designed to actually um, be another hole in, be another nail in Paul's coffin. Because as I said, he been through so much, he was shipwrecked for days and all that stuff, and then it happened. And, and it would be different if he was just bitten by a serpent and everything else went, went well. But on top of being uh, bitten by a serpent before he was shipwrecked and did all that stuff, um, there are some of you out there. That, that have had problem after problem after problem. It has not been just one thing. If you're like, it's, it, it's just one problem at a time, I can handle it. But um, my kids are acting crazy. My money's acting funny. My, my marriage is going on the rocks. And how much can I handle these these snakes, the snake just bit my hand and won't let me go. And 
the Lord saying, I know it's hard, I know it's hard. But keep moving forward. Keep moving forward. And unfortunately, sometimes it gets worse before it gets better. But you just have to know that God is with you. He is for you. And he will get the glory out of this some way, somehow. And it won't last forever. It won't last forever. You can do this. And this is not just a um, raw, raw sermon. You can do this. This is something I've experienced. Um, in 2017, I went through hell. Okay, just let me tell you what I went through. First, I had major financial trouble. I was in debt up to my ears. So I had to deal with that. So, And I'm on government assistance. So dealing with that financial issue and working with the banks and the and then taking some money from my government check was so, it was, it was difficult. And I had to go through this for about a year. And they said, okay, we'll just take uh, some, we'll just, uh, your payment plan, we'll just take uh, some payment of your account for about, uh, a year, and that would be it. But when you're on government assistance, barely making anything, and the government is taking a good portion of it, it's so hard to do anything. There, there were days, let me tell you, that I just couldn't, um, I, I, there were times when I couldn't do anything, when I was so out of money, and I, it just was awful. And on top of do, doing that with the banks, um, um, at the end of that year, my oldest brother passed away. So... And at the time, I hadn't seen my brother for three years, so I was devastated for that. On top of that, on top of that, I was having financial trouble at that time. So, on top of my brother passing away, um, that year I went in for a doctor's visit. And he said, usually I'm a pretty healthy person, but they called and said, the doctor wants to see you. So I went in to the doctor and he said, I was 35 years old at that time. And he said, Rachel, we got your blood test back, your just blood test, and I'm sorry to tell you this, Rachel, but you have diabetes. So, from the financial trouble to my brother passing away and me having diabetes, meaning that I had to change everything. That, everything I was eating, everything I was thinking. And there were days where I didn't think I could make it. But I'm here. I'm here. Despite all the pain of that year. Despite everything I went through that year. I'm here. So I'm a living witness that you can make it. That this is not a woo-woo testimony. That you're just, uh, I'm just spewing. You can make it because I did it. Now I'm debt free. Um, 
My blood sugars are under control, and I've and I've made peace with my brother passing away. So there is another side to it, cause I've been there. I've been depressed. I've been like a financial situation. Like, oh God, how am I gonna going to? Um, buy what I need or buy my necessities. I've been there, so this is not a, a sermon where she just say, "You can do it. Go ahead." No, I'm, I'm do, I'm saying this because I lived it. I, I lived uh, where the the serp, the serpents just keep piling up. But I'm still here, and how I got through that was just, I kept on going, I kept on preaching, I kept on doing my purpose, um, that's how I kept going. And you can do it, cause I did it. So guys, thank you for listening to me about the story of snakes and these three snake snakes. Forgive me if I got some of the Bible passages wrong, but um, I think I got it right. Um, that story where Eve is in, is in the beginning of Genesis. That story about Moses and the snakes is this, the rod and turning it into a snake. Um, it's in Exodus, and that story about Paul is in Acts. Um, I think it's in the middle of Acts. I will get the actual chapters uh, later. It was it was late last night when I finally finished eating dinner, so I didn't get a chance to actually um, I'll look up the scriptures to, to give them to you but I will post them later today. Thanks. Bye. And he'll make a way for you too. When it seems dark, that's 
where God is working the most. And I don't only have that story, I have several stories where God has got me out of every, out of every situation, whether losing people or whether just me and him. It's just been awesome, and God is just awesome. And thank you. Um, in fact, um, a, a, um, a story that I want to tell that God just laid upon my heart was how I got started in YouTube, on YouTube, and it came out of a very painful situation. Most preachers start with, with, with really happy circumstances. They're like, God has called me, this is that, that was not my story. Um, um, it came out of somebody that I admired and I expected saying something really awful to me. Um, after me trying to get into ministry for years and doors slamming, that person said something really awful. Uh, they said that God couldn't use me because I was in a wheelchair. That devastated me for me for a year, for almost a year, and I had so much to say, I was in so, I was in so much pain, and the word was bubbling up in me, and, um, YouTube had just come out at that point, that was about, um, not just come out, but it had been like, um, several years, um, and the Lord, the, the Lord caused me to see a video of how a person uploaded a video on YouTube, so I started uploading videos. The first videos I uploaded were just words to music. They didn't have the rules at that time, so they were just words to music, and um, the other set of videos was just my my uh, voice with my picture, and then I started with the video camera, and the process was to teach me everything, um, to see my first sermons and my first videos, they're not on Facebook, you have to go to my YouTube channel, so just type in Rachel Esdale if you want to, um, and you'll see them. Uh, I, I never, I never compel people to share, because I think that if it touches their hearts, or if they think it'll be beneficial to anyone, they, sh they share it anyway. Sometimes I'll say share it, but real, really, um, I think people know what touches them, what they want to share, they'll just share it anyway. So, really, I don't think any of my groups or my say so um, to, do, to do that. Because um, people know what touches their hearts. People know what touches their spirit. People know what what God is resonating in them to share. And I never want people to feel obligated to share something that God has been using only for them at that time, or God is, um, maybe they don't agree with, or think is biblically sound. So that's why you don't hear me all the time to, to share, say, share, um, or YouTube subscribe or follow me or whatever. Because I think people know what, what is, resonates with them or what will resonate with someone they know. 
and whoever's meant to see me will see me. And I don't need to pin myself either on here or on YouTube to for the right people to see me. And people are, are just coming without me doing anything because God is sending people. Let God send your audience. Let God send his audience. Push in prayer. You don't have to push a channel or push something. Push in prayer. Push in fasting. Push in the word and that's where you push. And when you push heavenward, he'll send the people earthward. Not, not. He'll send the people They'll send the right people at the right time. Some of you have been hustling and killing yourself, and he's saying, stop, you don't need to hustle. You just need to push in prayer, push in the word, and push in fasting. So thank you guys. Bye. Yeah.